Howdy, everybody. I pray you had a wonderful, safe, healthy, happy uh, week. I know that's um, a bit hard with considering what we're all going through, but um, keep praying, keep lifting everyone up. And um, yeah, so anyways, I last week was my birthday, so I decided to buy me a new tool for my birthday. I'll get to that once we get to that point, but this is a piece of spalted sycamore that um, my sister's co-worker had a bunch that was cut down about a year ago and I was fortunate enough to get quite a few big pieces and this um, really long branch that I thought would be perfect for trying out some holofoams. It is quite punky. Um, that's why I had to make kind of like two tenons because um, the first bit of wood that was closest to the end was really falling apart and I didn't trust it. Uh, putting that in a tenon and I also put some star bond thin CA over that so that way it would kind of help stiffen up those fibers and if anything else just you know give me a feeling of security <laughs> I guess I don't quite know if it does help but I do it because in my mind it helps me so I'm roughing it out with my um, one and a quarter I think it is uh, roughing gouge it's a sorby roughing gouge I'm just giving, um, getting it, trying to get it round and, and leveled out on the lathe. Now, of course, like with most projects, I always start out with an idea of what I want to end with, and then I get into it, and either the wood decides for me, or I just I'm not feeling the proportions of the shape. So I had um, stalked a lot of you on Instagram and uh, YouTube and also go on Pinterest quite a bit to look at pottery forms uh, for this shape that I was going for. Um, plus a friend of mine, Billy Burt, he has a channel as well, The Missy Studio. He recommended a book for me. It is called The Potter's Dictionary of Shape and Form. I will put the link for that book um, in the description below. It really helps, um, just looking over the images, it really helps see kind of like how proportions and gives you some new ideas and maybe some, you know, different shapes to start coming out of the box a little bit to try. Um, sometimes once I kind of like take a fancy towards a certain shape, I tend to repeat that, I guess, until I get sick of it. It's kind of like a song, like I'll listen to it over and over and over until finally I can't stand it anymore. But that's just part of my personality. So a lot of things, a lot of times I need a good, like, you know, kick you over the curb kind of thing, like get off of it and move on. I guess it's good because then you can, you know, really perfect it. I guess I don't want to leave it alone until I feel like I have done my best, I guess. To stiffen up the fibers in this very, very punky uh, piece of sycamore, spalted sycamore, um, it was ripped grain everywhere, everywhere really bad. So um, 
I use my, what I call my poor man stabilization. <laughs> it is um, just your normal resin whenever you mix it together, whatever you choose. This will work. I've used this for the fast, I've used it for the thick, and I've also used it with the slow. This one I'm using the slow hardener. And then however much resin you use, put that amount of acetone in with it. The acetone helps thin out the resin so it goes deeper into the piece, um, soaks in really good, and then it will slowly evaporate and leave behind just the hardened resin. Um, so it, it's not like a, a vacuum chamber, but it will um, suffice for pieces like this. Um, so that's, that's what I'm doing here and just doing the inside and outside really good. Um, and I let it sit overnight and it was ready to go um, by the afternoon, about lunchtime, so um, less than 12 hours. So here is my birthday gift. I'm so excited about it. Um, Billy Burt also recommended this to me and we had spoke over our video chat uh, several different things about this uh, hollowing tool. It's the Tim Yoder's uh, system and also the robust uh, box rest which um, I felt that it was an absolute must to have that. Um, you don't have to have it, but I felt it was a must to have it for, you know, I want to do big hollow pieces. So this is as smooth going as it looks. Let me tell you, I, if I hadn't paid so much for it, <laughs> I would have given it a tip. It practically drove itself. Um, I'll put the link in the description below and in the um, top corner of Billy Burt's review of it. He also did an awesome modification so that way it's not hooked into your tailstock but it hooks into a taper that goes into your tailstock um, which I'm looking to actually order and do that. Um, I just hadn't ordered it in time to do this video. So I am just loving every bit of this. This isn't a huge piece. Um, so it didn't take me too long but it also took me a lot less time than what I anticipated um, to hollow because if anybody's ever tried to hollow with you know just regular old tools you know that it's very frustrating um, I've kicked things off my lathe <laughs> or at least kicked them cockeyed on the uh, tenon to where you know it got all you know whatever anyways I just I can't say enough about this tool it's it's amazing and I know there's a, a lot of other hollowing tool systems out there and I haven't used them so I can't tell you the comparison of them but I can tell you um, just from how this system is set up it was the most versatile with the least amount of limitations and what I say by that is like as far as what tool you can put in the tip um, the different size rods you can use or um, it just had the least amount of limitations. I didn't have to buy a specific Tim Yoder tool rod to use with it. I could use any um, rod that would that's that size. I think it's the um, not three quarter or five eighths. I can't remember exactly what size it. I don't know the specifications. I will put the link in my video description so that way you can go check it out yourself. And it was a pretty decently priced hollowing system compared to others. I didn't have to buy, like I said, that it's not one of those items where you're limited to only purchasing their particular tools for. The basic setup um, gets you going and you can use carbide tips in there if you put a certain rod in. It just, it really was the one with the least amount of limitations. And I like to be able to, um, you know, customize uh, stuff according to how I turn and what I'm going to use it for safely, obviously. So thank you, Tim. And the shipping was very fast. Like I ordered it, um, probably a uh, day before my birthday and I got it, uh, that Saturday. So it was, it took three days to get it to me. And so fast shipping. Um, I can't, I, I just like, again, this system was just so smooth. Matter of fact, I was video chatting Billy while I was hollowing this out so he can, you know, make sure one, I was doing it properly and to uh, see how I liked it. So we were both anticipating, you know, good results and, and he was excited for me and I was excited. And so anyways, I'll quit jabbering on about it. If you have any questions about the tool, um, ask. I don't like I said, this is my uh, first time using it and only time so far. I do want to do some larger pieces of some harder wood to really kind of a, give it a thorough review. So until I can utilize it more, um, I won't be, you know, praising it too much, I guess I should say. 
until I can get an opportunity to um, use it with different woods and and um, you know give it a fair and honest review but just from what I uh, used of it so far with this piece it just with this really punky uh, chippy wood it and it left a great finish on the inside so um, not much sanding um, I just it was it was a great it was a great tool For my final finish for this, um, I knew I was going to use uh, resin because of how punky the piece was and I was just afraid that um, I wasn't going to be able to get a really good smooth finish on it so I was like, you know, I want a really high gloss. This is a fancy, you know, vase, I guess in my mind. So I wanted to put a really high gloss finish on it and I'm too impatient to spray lacquer until I get that glass shine. I, I end up getting things hazy. Um, until my uh, patients can slow down, I guess I'll just keep using the, the resin, which worked out fine. Um, I used the two to one, just mix it. There's no acetone in this, it's just two to one. Um, and if your lathe goes to a really low speed, mine goes to 50 RPMs, it's best to um, use that, utilize that, you know, turning while it kind of sets up. So I left this sitting on here um, for about an hour and a half until it set up enough to where I can come out and shut off my lathe. Um, unfortunately though, every bug in Florida decided to get into my shop and stick to my piece, even though I had it covered. I put a cardboard box over it while it was turning um, and I had beetles the next morning. So I had to sand it down and and do it all over again but if that hadn't happened I would have just kept this as the only coat but because beetles decided to make their way in my box and be part of my finish I had to sand it all down and do it again when I sanded it off to um, knock all the beetle legs and <laughs> pugs and stuff that get stuck to it. Um, I just used, I think, 240. Um, or it may have been 320, 360. I can't remember what grit. I know I didn't, I didn't sand it more than just that and wiped it down with denatured alcohol to get all of the, you know, dust and everything off of it and blew it off with my air compressor. And then just reapplied the same no, I'm sorry, I used the fast set this time because I wanted to finish this piece today, or that day, sorry. And so I decided, you know, I'm going to try the fast set. Um, it tends to bubble because it, you know, it works a lot faster. It Within about 15, 20 minutes, it starts to set up, which is good for the fact that I needed it to, to continue on and get it done and over with for the day. Um, I think it had a nice finish um, overall because of the fact that I already had a good coat of resin underneath. So I just used my um, my mini torch to get rid of the bubbles and um, it worked out just fine and of course I kept it running. I kept it running for only about, I think I put my timer on for about 45 minutes um, just to be extra safe. It was still a little tacky after 45 minutes but I could turn off my lathe. So. Um, this is that same day I am parting it off and starting to work on the lid portion of this face. After I sanded and branded, <laughs> I used the same two to one fast hardener. I just gave it um, several coats 
Uh, that end grain really soaks that stuff up, especially being that it was so punky and dry. Um, and then set that aside while I, I worked on the lid part. For the lid, I just drilled a 55 millimeter um, mortise on my um, drill press into a piece of a scrap, I think it's cabinet maple, um, probably a piece that I dug out of a dumpster at our local cabinet place. Um, I knew I was going to make a really small, I didn't want the lid portion to stick out much to be kind of flush. So I'm putting a mortise on this side so I can turn it around and uh, finish the top side and uh, do the finial separate. So I had some of this, um, I think it's Western Red Cedar. And Western Red Cedar is different than our Red Cedar we have here where it's a very yellow or white sapwood with a very pinkish red center. This stuff um, smells like urine. <laughs> it, it smells like pee. And, you know, and that's just that's the only way I can describe it. It just smells like pee. So I may be wrong. I don't know everything, and I certainly... Uh, don't know for absolutely sure. But anyways, it is not the best piece to do for finial, but it was all I had that was the um, big enough size to do what I wanted to do with it. So, and I was planning on painting it all black um, originally anyway, so I felt it really didn't matter what wood I used. I just didn't want to use a really nice, pretty figured wood or some um, good, good wood because I was just going to paint over it.
putting a finish on this finial proved to be just a headache. I had so many different finishes on here and problems with spray paint and hazy lacquer and blah, 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 blah. This is one of the things I had tried was the gold and copper kettle wax that I used and I ended up not really liking it. So I decided to call on all of my Instagram peeps, my fellow wood turners for some advice and a gentleman had recommended um, black matte. And I was like, ooh, that would be interesting with a really glossy piece. So I decided to go with it. Worst comes to worst, I just have to paint over it again. Not that I haven't done that a million times with this piece. <laughs> and uh, see how that looked. So I had some matte black apple barrel black um, paint. And I decided to go with it and just use a matte clear coat to spray over top of it once that was all dry. And I love it. It's perfect. I think it really suits the piece and kind of gives it something a little different. So I appreciate the suggestions. Thank you so much for watching. I pray you'll have a safe, healthy, wonderful week. And don't forget his promises, Psalms 91.1. God bless.